Prada that I mean that I'm talking about. They both of them make compromises in terms of their own vision and it doesn't work out. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to my huge channel, everybody. I'm so excited about this video because I think it is a topic you are all eager to learn more about. And as you might know from my previous videos, I'm a huge, let's say Mutual Prada or not Prada maybe. So I'm a huge Mutual Prada fan. And that's also the reason why I was extremely excited about the show yesterday. I think it was yesterday and I just saw the pigs in the night. I think it was 1 a.m. when we could see them on Vogue Runway. And yeah, I think you might have seen it from my title probably. You know what my opinion is about this collection. I want to talk with you about that. Well, this is first of all, to make this clear, this is my personal opinion and my expectations that haven't been met uh, with this collection. I want to tell you why I think that and maybe you will share my opinion. Maybe you will think the op uh, exact opposite. I know that there are some crazy Ref Simmons fans out there, so maybe uh, you will not be amused, but I think, come on guys, it's just fashion. And even though we live for it and breathe for it, um, I mean, it's just clothing. So uh, if I don't like something, I will just tell it and um, I will make sure that uh, we start a conversation because that's the most interesting thing and this is the whole reason why I do that. Maybe you might be interested uh, in this kind of content as well in this world. I guess I will make like maybe a super short recap about Mutual Prada. I know that, well, I have made like a few videos about Prada now, so I think I won't have to uh, talk about her whole life and achievements and all. But So if you just Google Misha Prada, for example, the first explanation that we get for her is that her first name is, of course, Maria Bianchi. I've explained that in my other video. She was born in 1949, uh, took over the brand of her family Prada, which is super old. I think it was 1913. And she is best known um, yeah, as the head um, uh, of design at Prada's fashion house. And she is renowned for using minimalistic designs to achieve a very traditional style with modern influence to create empowering silhouettes that are very modern but also have always a nod to the history either of the label um, or of history in general if you talk for example about the nylon fabric which has a huge history and which was kind of revolutionized in fashion terms by Prada and by Micha Prada in 1977 uh, when everybody was wearing silk clothes and um, the very natural fabrics um, you know for example like in the in the times of World War One and Two, when when um, silk tights were like the most precious things ever maybe you know it from these pinup girls who always have this stripe at the back of their um, of their legs it was actually you know women who didn't have the money to buy these silk uh, tights for example they just drew this uh, this um, this line on their on the back of their leg to make it appear like they're wearing tights even though they weren't wearing any so uh, super interesting so that was how how um, expensive silk was and of course because of the fact uh, in terms of the US it had to be imported from Japan and from the from the southeast the nylon fabric was usually used for military uh, purposes you know like tents or you know, to create stuff to put on other stuff to not get wet and uh, it had a very functional meaning to it and uh, well as the brand Prada originally created like trunks and luggages and handbags what they actually did until the 70s uh, Prada is doing ready to wear since 77 I guess that was the first women's wear collection so it's not that long actually for a brand that is over 100 years old um, her grand granddad used to sorry the granddad used to put these nylonish um, fabrics over the luggages which were made of leather of course and that was something she used to revolutionize the fashion world kind of when still natural fibers and textiles were like the hit and um, yeah she just took these nylon um, fabrics she also created them on the on herself which was extremely expensive and what she for example said once was you know our mess and Dior and everybody they're still creating uh, leather handbags but we are like so much future forward and we're uh, thinking ahead and we're not creating leather handbags anymore we're going to do it with nylon and I mean you all know the the, the nylon black backpack uh, which was the best seller and it was it had the same price as the leather handbags that's why she got a little shitstorm back then but it still turned uh, out to be one of the most successful products of the brand until now so um, we see that Mutual Prada is not only like this functionality person, but she's extremely 
futuristic in terms of vision and um, she's always ahead of her time even though you might some people might say well Prada is usually very chic very elegant very feminine you know it might be because of the uh, the prints the embroideries you know it's usually she uses a lot of crystals and stuff uh, a sequence you can see a lot of things that might be associated with femininity usually but uh, if you look at the cuts and the inspiration she has them uh, she has them from she's usually inspired from very functional things also from professions uh, we know, very well know the usual Prada look which consists of a plissé skirt a crew neck uh, shirt and this is also what you wear yesterday for example I'm usually like so eager always to know what she personally wears you know when she steps out for these two seconds like hi it's me prada what she's wearing i just love it so much and i think this time it seemed like she wore it, was was wearing a double-faced organza skirt or something silk and then this cashmere um a short sleeve shirt over it and the the classical prada sandals so she looked beautiful uh, well, so much about her and um, what she actually means to the fashion world. Um, and Ralph Simmons, on the other hand, is somebody who is also, I would say, inspired by functionality and minimalism. But, uh, well, I feel like uh, Ralph Simmons can only show his real talent when he's working for a different brand. He also, of course, has his own namesake brand, which is also very successful, very streetwear oriented. His own label is also like a little... Um, owed to his, to youthfulness so it's usually like very streetwear oriented and that's what it doesn't make it very interesting for me i think for in terms of menswear it's definitely a bit more interesting but not to me personally but when i look at his times at dior or Josanda, it's insane and to me personally his best era ever was at calvin klein i do not know why nobody liked his uh, collections or why it wasn't that successful because i think he left two years later and this whole concept of Calvin Klein 205 West 39 New York City collapsed. Um, you know, I'm the one who's still on Grail and eBay and everywhere to find these pieces. Uh, if you also like them, um, they are, usually have a pretty good price point, I think, because no one's interested in them. And I think um, Rev Simmons shows here very well how he is able to adapt to a house heritage, for example, with Calvin Klein and this whole American heritage and still implement his own vision so perfectly i think it was the best design ever it's definitely you know a calvin klein era of simmons is one of my favorite eras of all uh, my most favorite fashion eras i would say so um uh, just to make sure that i really appreciate and love his designs and i'm very well aware of his talent so coming to the fact that these both guys started this collection, but it's the first one ever in real life show of them both together. They have very cool installations in the first ones. And we see again here the influence of Ralph Simmons that he, uh, he knows about music, he knows about architecture and everything. So he has a very artistry vision. And in my opinion, he also ruled that in the last two collections, um, which were shown like as, as virtual collections. But here this time, Again, an interesting setting. I mean, simultaneously showing in two continents is like extremely crazy. I guess it was super hard, super expensive, but that shows they have the budget. And it was also a very friendly nod to Shanghai, to China, to show that um, they appreciate the interest um, of the Chinese people, or of the Asian people, and that they also show a collection there. I mean, they wouldn't have to do it. You know, they can just show in Milan and everybody will be happy. But uh, by showing in Asia, in my opinion, it was just a friendly nod like, hey, we see you there. And on the other hand, it's like, of course, budget wise, I mean, they just make their money uh, with these people. So why shouldn't they do that? And that's definitely also because they want to improve that or maintain the status they have right now. So coming to the collection. So now I just talked for 10 minutes about these two people because I did, even though I didn't want to talk about it, but you need to talk about designers before talking about their collections and to wrap this thing up now coming to the collection spring summer 22 women's wear shown in milan and shanghai so first of all when the press release came out i read it immediately because i really wanted to know what these two people were trying to achieve with this collection and just to give you an idea of what they meant i'm gonna read it out loud it said is seduction through reduction for their Spring Summer 22 Prada collection, co-creative directors Misha Prada and Ralph Simmons consider ideas of seduction, of the expression of sexuality, 
though clothing, through clothing, I don't know. A process of stripping down clothing leads inevitably to the body emphasized or exposed. So what does that mean for us? Uh, a seduction through reduction. This is... Um, the title itself is super clear. I think it is extremely strong describing the symbiosis of these two designers. I would say the part of seduction goes maybe to Prada and the seduction of Rilla and the point of reduction goes to Ralph Simmons. Even though I wouldn't say, I mean, Mircea Prada is the person who made the, the, uh, the expression ugly, chic, cool in the 90s. I mean, nobody liked her ready to wear actually until it was the 90s. I mean, the 90s changed a lot. I mean, it's the same with Josanda and stuff. And this whole femininity thing kind of changed. And she definitely wasn't a person trying to create designs that were seductive for women. I think it was the ex exact opposite. He tried to, she tried to design things that were feminine, yet professional, sophisticated and interesting. Uh, but I wouldn't call it seductive. And I think Prada is the label um, that is not well known for um, doing very bearing or um, yeah, very open designs that show a lot of the body usually, of the feminine body. And even though if you're wearing a bralette of Prada, it usually looks very functional and sporty. So this is something I love about her because I love the image of a human body that doesn't have to be sexualized usually. So this co collection was a bit surprising to me, even though of course I do like a certain way of sexiness, but I like it in an extremely subliminal way. And if it's, uh, that's also why I have issues with brands like Versace or um, I don't know, Roberto Cavalli. These are of course extreme versions, but I just do not like it if it's very uh, obvious to the eye when something is very sexual. So um, what we see here in the collection, I'm not sure if I can show the video because the last time I tried to put it in my video, I got like these threatening mails from Google, like put that thing out. So I had to cut it out, but I will show you some images. Um, okay. The first thing I realized while watching it live, I hope you all did that, was um, there are not many items in the collection, uh, which is not an issue in the first place. Uh, it's totally okay to concentrate on core pieces. And this whole theme of the core, the body, the naked body is, the, is a theme in this collection. So it totally makes sense that they do not have a lot of items. The question that I had when I realized, okay, I, it feels like kind of repetitive. I see this mini skirt, I liked it immediately because Mini skirts is again something that is usually very sexy or very bearing, but in the context of Prada, it's usually never sexualized. So I like this image and I like the tail at the back with the ribbon on it and it, everything seemed, it had this sweetness, this funniness, this wit that we know from Prada. And then it had this minimalistic approach that was very rough. Um, I get the idea of having core pieces in a collection, but I do not like too much of a repetition. Why do I not like it? Um, why do you repeat a certain item so often? I mean, then just maybe show a fewer looks, do not show that many looks. If you want to say it's, it's, a, it's an idea of sustainability, that you do not have more items, that you have only a core wardrobe that you want to implement in people's minds, then just show lesser pieces. But seeing the same look, I really felt like I saw two looks in this whole runway. That was my first impression before even thinking of what I liked and what I did like. But, you know, we have all this instinctive way of liking something or not. And the, the moment I looked at this stuff, I was not impressed. I was like, okay, these things all existed before, didn't they? The mini skirt was cool. I love that it, um, it seemed like this thick silk. I do not still not know if they were all made of silk. Maybe they were also taffeta because taffeta is also a fabric that Prada likes to use a lot. We also saw a lot of silk and satin. Uh, within the coats in the autumn winter women's wear collection for example so um okay we saw that mini skirt uh, that was very minimalistic it had this tail on it so we saw that these skirts were worn with oversized leather blazers or knits with like incorporated corsetry details which again is a nod to femininity of course which is very obvious but uh, and on the other hand we saw like satin column dresses that were also very min minimalistic not very um strange cuts but were prim at the front but slid to the top of the thigh and then at the back so the two of them said that they had been looking for a way 
to show femininity and womanhood that has been distilled historically in fashion uh, which makes totally sense in general you know they were like they were like okay we thought of the word elegant and this is usually something that might be associated with Prada even though yeah well okay elegant suits let's say is elegant and they also said like well we were thinking about it how are we going to describe this and then they were like elegant is not very suitable to this collection and usually elegant seems also like a very historical expression a certain way of a sophisticated or professional look um so they said it just sounds old and if we think about the fact that Prada needs to get younger and also in terms of audience I mean this is also maybe the idea why Ralph Simmons is coming into collaboration we know that Misha Prada is not the youngest designer unfortunately so she's also maybe looking you know sideways how um, can I find someone who can take over this brand because it's still in the hands of the family um, maybe it's because of that that they try to turn younger and the pieces before were like a bit too feminine maybe for young people but I don't think that I mean we know that nylon was very successful also two years ago so I don't think they had any huge issue I know they have an issue issue in menswear and that was um, also a good way to take Ralph Simmons here on board because he's like very strong in menswear also but in general, I do not get uh, why you um, only create a limited amount of items. So in another interview, uh, Mitra Prada said that the things that are historically beautiful and that are interesting are interesting and beautiful, but they want to disturb them. They want to make something disruptive out of them. So um, even an evening gown, who's usually very beautiful, feels like an irreality nowadays. I mean, I also get the point. An evening gown is something so surreal right now. We're not going to any parties that are like enclosed rooms or locations and everything just got a lot easier we're all in lockdown we were doing home office i mean we all know we all wanted to wear comfy stuff so elegance or wearing uncomfy things suitable for like certain occasions really had a hard time in the last two years i would say so no one of us I guess bought a dress that is like made for a wedding or anything because we're like okay when are we going to wear it so in instead of that you buy something more comfortable that still can look chic so um that's the point that i'm that they are making and theory wise i understand everything and also support it actually but i just feel like the implementation of this theory in designs didn't work out um i didn't study design and nor do i know enough about cuts and draping and everything technique wise but when i see that a dress doesn't suit perfectly and when it wraps up in a certain way that it shouldn't be i feel disturbed and i feel like we should see this everywhere but not on the runway uh, and especially when we're seeing dresses for that are being sold for like thousands of euros and these dresses that were interesting because ideologically again very interesting because they have this corsetry that doesn't look like a usual corset it looks like uh, they're made to look like bones actually which again is a nod to this core body image that Ralph Simmons was talking about you know he says like we want to reduce everything you know uh, it's a seduction for reduction so they reduce everything to its core even the fabric the textile they're only bones you know extremely cool idea I love it but if, if I'm looking at the dress overall I'm not convinced. Um, I didn't see a very interesting cut here. Of course, the back is interesting, but um, maybe that's like, of course, that is the, the seductive way of showing a dress. Also having these leather belts on the arms and on the body is something interesting. And I would say this is something applying to this youthfulness image in their heads. Uh, to me, I felt like it was a very young collection. It was definitely appealing to a younger audience. Uh, but I think it just got there with the lack of creativity. And uh, for example, coming to the leather jacket. <sighs> I don't know, are we ready for biker jackets again? Like vintage looking biker jackets? I don't say make it look embellished or anything. I'm not a fan of leather jackets at all in any way. So maybe it's all, only my personal issue. But I'm really asking you, are we ready for biker jackets? I mean, I don't feel like we are. Um, we know leather jackets from Prada in her prior shows, usually very sleek, very thin, very elegantly shown, always in contrast with her shoes or skirts. This time it was shown for its very original purpose, I would say. It was made to be shown 
as a very youthful grungeful jacket you know a bit of these rock and roll vibes and i couldn't help but think of hedy sliman changing saint laurent it's not i don't say that it's very comparable but i feel like ralph simmons is there to change the brand like hedy did it with yves saint laurent so um he's trying to turn it younger but what i don't see here is the disruptive thing what was disruptive about this collection i think it was like a very harmonic um an elegant collection with not many um uh, rebellious things about it you know i think the problem is um if you're saying you're making something disruptive or you want to change something because they say very often uh, also in the press release and also in interviews uh, they want to change this classical vision of the woman and of the, his the historical image of womanhood and femininity but then again i see like very classic classical corsetry on jackets which looks insanely made you know i can't wait to actually touch it and see it in real life because i don't see say anything against the way the the, the quality is or the cuts even though I didn't get that cardigan, you know, I, that was like very rough again to put just a cardigan on it. Um, but I didn't see the, the disruption here. Mainly I felt like we saw some Prada core pieces like the knits, the knit sets, the panties, the mini skirts, which was like the usual sexiness we also know from Miu Miu of Prada. But then we had some graphics of Ralph Simmons, you know, he's very uh, he's a huge fan of graphics and artists and is very well known to put these also. He did that in his Calvin Klein collection, he did that at Dior, but he also does it with his own namesake from Rand. But I think draping a little bit from the sides and making it a bit more interesting is not enough. So my problem is I actually they just didn't meet my expectations because you have just these two genius minds um, of the fashion world collapsing and creating one collection. And I feel like, and that, that's something I said in my very first video um, where I talk, talked about Prada, they both of them make compromises in terms of their own vision and it doesn't work out. Um, Prada is making a lot of compromises and I think she is just like, I let him do it. I can't imagine that she's not even integrating herself a lot because I feel like we see a lot of usual Prada pieces that might have existed before and then we just see like Ralph Simmons like doing a little bit about it yeah I don't think it's a great combination and maybe it's just this is my personal personal opinion but you know what I mean it's it's because we love them so much and we want them to create something again because they have created for several years and decades now stuff that we love so much that we want them to continue with that but I don't still don't feel like it is a good collection and you know what? I realized that I liked menswear more and that shows that Ralph is kind of weighing more into it. Well, um, I don't see Prada in it anymore. So since everybody was um, complaining about the Prada menswear and now be Prada menswear being stronger than women's men shows to me that Prada is like kind of stepping back and Ralph is doing the hits and he's very good in menswear. But from my perspective, it doesn't work for the women's wear and I really cannot wait to see it. I mean, they're doing a lot of marketing and they're very good at marketing. They're also going a lot more into these iconic themes. These are also, you know, if you have these pillar products, like the re-nylon issue, then they have these accessories. And now they're all going to that triangle Prada logo. Like they're reducing everything to its core, to the things that have been successful. But what is where is the Simmons in this? Where is the Prada persona in it? I don't see it and I think they can do much better if they don't work together actually. But I still am excited about the upcoming collection. This was just a short video about my opinion about the collection. Um, to wrap it up, I was not... I was a bit disappointed but I know that a lot will come and Prada is still a brand that is one of my favorites still even with this collection maybe this is also the reason why I'm so strict with this brand because I love it so much and I'd really like to know how you like this collection because I feel like many people loved it and I was a bit surprised that nobody talked like out loud okay something was missing I, or am I just the issue Please share your opinion down below and um, watch my other videos if you are interested in some more Prada deep dive. And of course, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. And yeah, I can't wait to see you to my next video.
The product you're missing, guys.